Wow, a lot of passion being expressed there. Yes. And to further interrogate the basis for this position on, on this offensive bill, we are now being joined by Sonny Ekuusi, a lawyer and the Chairman, Human and Constitutional Rights Committee of the African Bar Association. You saw him speaking in the particular report. Good to have you here this morning. Now, let's start it off. I'm looking at it closely because um, according to the 1999 Constitution as amended, um, Section 38 speaks to the freedom of right, uh, freedom of thought, religion. conscience, and religion. religion. Yes, yes. And the question is, this particular bill, does it violate Section of 38 course, of, of the 1999 Constitution? Of course, it does violate Section 38 of the 1999 Constitution because um, it is something that... And don't forget that Nigeria is a, a secular state. Yes. Okay, the state has no right to interfere in the way religion is a practice, you know. There's a separation between the state and the church, you know. The state cannot interfere in the way churches are run mm -hmm. because these are two different entities, you know. But now we have this bill that are trying to interfere, okay, in the way Christianity is run. It's even going and saying that it's going to, there's going to be a council in Abuja, National Christian Council, for education, which is now going to prescribe syllabuses for schools at all levels, which means primary school, secondary school, seminaries, universities. So you are going to have Redeemer University, for instance, a country in Abuja is going to say, these are your syllabus. We are seeing this is quite dangerous. Dangerous because, uh, you know, where we are coming from before now, uh, there have been corruption of syllabuses in schools, you know, to be teaching our kids LGBT, masturbation, and all that. I'm a lawyer. At one time, we went to court. Now, these people are abroad because they are putting pressure on African countries to destroy their human capital. So I'm not just, this is not just hearsay or conspiracy theory. I am inside because I go to the United Nations. I know what is happening. Now, they are coming with this bill, and this bill, obviously, is being sponsored from abroad. So you have a council in Abuja where they will not prescribe a syllabus, and that syllabus will contain LGBT and all that. You contain masturbation, because they are targeting our young people who are in school, so that to destroy them. You know, South Africa has gone. South Africa, in this matter, when I say it's gone, it means that South Africa has legalized LGBT, transgender, and all that. And the United Nations is also involved, United States, and all that. Kamala Harris, Vice President of the United States, has gone around 10 African countries, they must legalize the LGBT. Now, they are, ta they are, they are, they are, I mean, they are, they are tackling uh, Uganda for the legalizing the LGBT. What we are saying is that we are different. Each country should grow with its own values. We are different. They should leave us alone. We have our culture, we have our own value, I mean, values. We can't interfere in the way they run their country. They should not interfere in the way we make our laws. You are talking about the 10th Assembly and that uh, they should be very careful. Yes, we stand, they should not, not only that, they should not be robust stamps, national assembly, but also they should be wary of the kind of law that they pass to make good laws for the people of this country, no? People are suffering in this country. Okay, right now, people can hardly, can hardly eat and all that. So what we need is good governance. We don't need all these um, laws that have to do with LGBT and all that. What is all this for? People are hungry, people are tired. They need medical uh, uh, attention, okay? So if these people are abroad, if they, if they want their own good, they should be to hospitals. They should uh, take off our roads, electricity and all that, or they should, um, I mean, give scholarship for education. But they should not be putting pressure on us to legalize all these things. That's where I'm coming from because I know, I mean, I've been in this for so many years, so I know what is happening. The way you were in school, probably you had the very good textbooks like Things Fall Apart, Macbeth. Now they have all changed them. Now what they are changing them is sex-related things, you know? They don't have cartoons for babies, I mean, children that are under five years. What is all this? Now this council is coming, and uh, they are saying they are going to establish a council in Abuja that is going to recommend syllabuses. You know, Christian uh, denominations are different I'm a Catholic. I mean, I'm not going to accept things that, that is not Catholic. You have an Anglican church, you have a redeemed, you have a different churches. So how will a council in Abuja now recommend syllabuses to these, the seminaries and churches and schools of this world? It is a violation of human rights. As a lawyer, I'm saying that this is, is not acceptable. 
and that bill should be dismissed because he lacks merit. They are going to meet in Abuja next week, they can't, the people who are sponsoring the bill. They are going ahead because they had um, a Zoom meeting. And we told them, look, this bill is not acceptable because it's violation of people's rights, okay? Because I have a right to worship the way I like. You cannot tell me now, okay, start worshiping this way. Don't clap your hand, don't shout. No, it's my right. I know if, I, if I'm against, if I do anything against the, the law, arrest me and all that. But don't tell me how to worship because this is practice that is central to every human being, the right to freedom of, like Rightly said, of uh, conscience, freedom of religion, freedom even privacy, okay? So this is very, this is um, very, very sad, eh? that, um, because what it means that Nigeria is heading towards, like China, or the old Soviet Union, where religion um, or Christianity has, uh, is undercover. I mean, you cannot, you can practice it undercover because the state has encroached and uh, you don't seem to be worshipping the way you should worship. So we are saying that this is in bad faith and democracy is about right of fairly people. Mm. I heard you talking about the Tenth Assembly and all that. Yes, this is something that presidential democracy that promotes the rights of the people, you know. We all have this right, basic right, and nobody should try to violate it because it's a fundamental, it's called fundamental human right. Right, right, right to freedom of worship, freedom of um, 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 conscience and all, and all that. And we are in a secular state. The state has no right to prescribe the way you and I should worship. All right, then. So I would like to uh, come in, uh, Mr. Yes. Sonny. You know, as a lawyer and a human rights activist, mm -hmm. how would you char characterize the potential impact of such a bill on the freedom of religion and the rights of Christian believers in Nigeria? And what specific provisions in the bill do you find particularly concerning or yeah. problematic from a legal Session, and human rights Session seven, uh, perspective? Section 7 of, of the bill describes the functions of this council and what it says that one of them is to regulate, to collect, to certify of uh, religious instructors, which means pastors, priests, Catholic priests will be certified. You need to have a license in order to practice your religion, which means if you are holding a Christian crusade, say in Lagos, and you don't have a license from this council, they will, they will, I mean, they will shut it down. We are saying this is not, this is not proper, mm. okay? That section seven talks about the functions of this council, you know, saying that they have to collect, certify, train your pastors and your priests. Come on, this is not acceptable because, I mean, you have your faith, you worship, you have your pastors, you train your pastors or your priests the way you want. But a council in Abuja should not, that's why we are saying that this bill is being sponsored from abroad. Like I said earlier that um, many NGOs in abroad have been putting pressure on African countries to, you know, legalize terrible things, LGBT and all that. So, and this is one thing they are trying to do, okay? To make sure that we don't live as a people because they are afraid that we might become a war power. This is not a conspiracy theory. I go to the United Nations, I've been involved at meetings, so international, I travel a lot, so I know what is happening. And this is dangerous eh, because um, it's more important than politics. People think that politics is the first thing. The first thing is culture, and at the heart of culture are values, okay? You can't even grow a democracy without values. Look at what's happening to, in Nigeria because Christ of values. If you have a Christ of values, you can't succeed in democracy. You can't get the democratic dividends we are, we are talking about. And these people are putting pressure on us to destroy all those values that we, that we hold there. And we are saying, no, 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 because by the time these things are destroyed, we are finished. That's why I'm saying that it is more important than politics because people think that economy is the best. What? No, because this is the most important, your culture and your values. By the time you are destroyed as a person, you can't even be alive to, uh, <laughs> I mean, to be in politics. Well, that, that's why we're saying that this is very, very important. That's why I've come here today to say, look, oh, we need to be very careful because it will affect every one of us, whether you are a Christian, you are a Buddhist, you are a traditional religion practice, or internet free thinker. You know, because by the time they're not giving you a syllabus, how you should um, think, you know, how you should live your life, it is terrible. I thought that they have already corrupted the syllabuses, biology, chemistry textbooks, they are no longer what you, maybe when you went to school. They now put a watermark inscription saying that my mother is a harlot. We'll go to court over, 
oh, over this. The, the integrated science that you know, it now has masturbation, it now has um, um, how to put on the condom, even mathematics. Mathematics, the designer said, if they want to solve problems, they said, uh, 40 condom minus two condoms. What, what, wait a minute. And these are just for our babies. Boys and girls in just <laughs> one and two are meant to learn this. So we are saying, by the time we wake up, they are going to destroy us. You know what's happening in Europe now? That they don't have people. First of all, they have migration problem. The young people are being destroyed. Why is it that Canada is opening its doors for us to, to come in? Because they're short of manpower. UK is the same thing. Because they are destroyed. So we can't allow this to happen because Nigeria is a potential world power. Don't forget that if not for bad leadership, Nigeria will not have been in this shape. Nigeria will have been a world power. We have the human resources. We have international resources. Now, these people abroad, okay, I don't want to mention names specifically, they are afraid that we might one day because they want to destroy our human capital. They want to destroy religion, culture, okay? And these are things that are dear to us, okay? I, 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 when I was growing up, I grew up in a, a cultural setting. I'm a true Nigerian, so if you destroy that, you have destroyed me. So that's why we're very much concerned and saying, look, oh, the National Assembly should make sure that laws that they pass are good laws that will be for our, our welfare. Look at the way we are suffering, okay? If they are interested, they should make a law that will protect our lives. You know how many people who are being killed? How many Christians who are being killed? Huh? You know this girl who was killed, this is Deborah, was killed in Sokoto till date. No justice for Deborah. So if they want to make a law, they should make a law that protects our lives and property. You know, that is very, that is key. That's key now because you can't, I mean, I can't go to my village with that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm afraid. I mean, so we first thing is security, okay? Instead of making this law that has to do with the way I worship, the mode of my worship, whether I'm going to, you know, that's not proper. It's going to affect all, all Christian denominations, redeems, Catholic, Anglican, everybody. So they are not giving their universities syllabuses and their seminaries, imagine Catholic seminary, I mean like um, like a bigger seminary, we now have a syllabus from a council in Abuja given to them to, wait a minute, this is terrible. All right, so, okay. <laughs> but it needs to come in here. Yes, 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 yes. And my question will be, yeah. why Christianity? Yes. Understanding that there are three main recognized religions yes. in Nigeria. Christianity, Islam, and of course, um, putting in indigenous religion. Yes. So the question is why Christianity? Why Christianity? I mean, this is something, yes, I also ask myself why Christianity? Because uh, don't forget, this is not the first attack on Christianity. We have had a uh, license of marriages, Christian uh, uh, marriages. I was also involved in that argument. We also have put in provisions in Corporate Affairs Commission, CAC, provisions so, to gag, to, yeah, to gag. Uh, okay. Christian NGO, somebody has gone to court, a lawyer has gone to court, and those sessions have been, have been knocked off. So there has been an attack on Christianity. And this is what we're very careful because it's equity and fairness, you know? That why not apply, you know, I mean, what, I mean, everybody should be on the same playing field, the level playing field. You don't take one religion, we have Islam, we have Islam, we have traditional African religion, we have Buddhists and all that. Why tackle Christianity? Not only tackling the, uh, the way Christianity is being operated now, they're also killing Christians in this country, you know? I mean, the question of, uh, I mean, the borough and all that. And many Cali, Cali priests have been killed. So what you are saying is that, look, don't take exception. Democracy has made a level playing ground for all of us. It's equity, okay? What is good for uh, the Ganda? How did they put it again? What, what is, is good, good for the, the, good for the Ganda. Ganda? So a level playing ground for every one of us. Mm. And don't discriminate against anybody because discrimination is also on constitution as section 42 of uh, the, the, the constitution. Mm. So let live, life is let and let live. Ah, that's, that's my concern here as a lawyer. Life is let and let live. And what uh, applies to A should apply to B. That is secular state, that is democracy. Don't target one religion and say this religion if you want to practice your faith because what they are saying, the background for this is saying that they are not happy the way some uh, Pentecostals preach, you know? that uh, they are a little bit radical, and they are a little bit, um, you know, but they are not the only one that preach like that, you know? Other religions also make that kind of thing. So why take these people? In any case, if they offend any law, arrest them, take them to court, okay? 
I mean, let justice be done. I'm not saying that people should be spared. If you believe that somebody in trying to practice Christianity offends the law, oh, let the law take his, I mean, take his course. Okay. What we are against is that you don't tell me the modality and the way I should worship because that belongs to me and my God. And you don't give me a syllabus from Abuja and say, ah, by now your school should be teaching these children so, so, and so. Okay. I would yes. like to come in here, Mr. Somi, because we don't have uh, a yes, lot sir. of time left. Yes, now, you've spoken about the broader trends and patterns that you've observed in recent times, yes. even in uh, you know international bodies. But yes. um, before you go, I want us to talk about the strategies that you believe the CSOs and organizations that uh, stakeholders yes. should undertake in response to uh, to protect the rights of Christians yes. going forward. I mean, this is bigger what you are doing. I mean, uh, I mean, um, I mean, just uh, speaking out, you know. And next week, when they are having this summit in Abuja, some uh, bishops will be there, including uh, Bishop Kuka. They are going to be in Abuja to try to ask questions. What is happening here? So advocacy is one, because nobody should take the violence. No, it's just advocacy to make our views felt that we are making now, and also to let the Christian um, pastors or whatever to come out and say, look, this is not acceptable, okay? Mm -hmm. There should be a dialogue. I mean, and before you do anything, you have to, there was no prior dialogue before this bill came out. You have dialogue and say, look, what is, I'm looking at something, is it going to be stable for you? Don't just come out with something and then just want everybody to adopt. So I think it's, we need to dialogue more because what, that's what democracy is all about. Our representative should assess our will. They should do, you know, they are representing us, eh? Mm -hmm. They are not running their business. Of course. They are our representative in government, so they should, Promote our interests, you know. They are not running their business. They are not doing us a favor, okay? So, they are representing you and I. And we should demand that you, they should represent us well. That is how democracy started in Greece. Representative democracy, people who represent us and promote our, our aspirations and our interests. And when there's a conflict between that, we should try to say no. Because the people are suffering in democracy, okay? The leaders are not the sovereigns. We are the sovereigns. The people are the sovereigns. And we should demand for a better thing in legislation, no? And you have your representative. You should know the name of your, your I mean, your senator from your senatorial zone. I should know the name. And if you're not doing, doing well, I'll say, look, please, oh, what is happening here? Mm -hmm. So it's about representation, good representation. That's what democracy is all, is all about. So advocacy, okay? Telling them, look, the proper thing as we are doing now, so that uh, the laws that they make should be good laws, okay? I also make that in the incorporation of bills, you know, there are bills that are incorporated into, into our body law, they should also incorporate good laws. You don't incorporate laws that have to do with LGBT and all that. These are foreign things. Somebody cannot stay in New York or Washington DC and tell me how to make laws. We are different, it's a different country. I cannot, or our president cannot tell the uh, US how they should pass their laws. You know? So they should not interfere the way they pass the law. The way now they are not saying that Uganda, because they have passed anti-gay -gay law, they are going to be denied the American visa. Wait a minute. This is the internal affairs, and they have passed anti-gay law. Respect it because it, they are, I mean they have got it, their independence, they are sovereign. They say well, Nigeria is a sovereign country, we have our independence. So we should make law that that um, that is in line with our traditional religious, philosophical, philosophical uh, aspiration mm -hmm. as a people, not just to copy what is done abroad, okay? Uh, we are different people altogether. All right, I want to say many thanks to you. Thanks a lot for coming. Thanks, thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thank you for being here. The morning show. I'm very, very happy to come here. All right. Yeah.